Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today I'm going to do a quick little video showing you how to sew buttonholes and buttons on your sewing machine. I'm going to be using this little machine right here. This is a Brother CS6000i, and this one is probably about 10 years old. It's been with me for a long time. I wanted to use this machine today because it's a really entry-level machine that's really great for beginners. So for our buttonholes, we're going to be using this one-step buttonhole foot, and this comes with the machine. It can also be called an automatic buttonhole, and it's just really simple and easy to use, and I really like that you just set everything up and then you push down on the pedal and you go and you don't have to push any other buttons, so it's really foolproof. After you make your buttonholes, you're gonna to wanna to sew on your buttons, and you can do it by hand or you can do it on your machine, and this machine and a lot of other machines will come with a button foot and it just has a little piece here in the front that's going to hold your button in place and then you zigzag over the top to attach your button. These are both really useful machine feet to learn how to use, especially if you're a little bit scared of buttons or buttonholes. I encourage you to try these out and get comfortable with them. Let's get started. I'm using my brother's CS6000i and this is the buttonhole foot that came with the machine. So all you do is grab your button and you put it in the back here and you tighten this little section at the back to the width of your button and you just leave your button in there. Then you want to remove your presser foot and attach this buttonhole foot. Okay, that's all done. Now you want to bring this lever down and make sure that the plastic part for the lever is behind this little plastic part on the buttonhole foot. This is going to ensure that the buttonhole is made the correct length for your button. Next, you wanna grab your fabric. And I have gone ahead and made some markings on my fabric. So right here, this is my imaginary end of my button band. So here's the folded edge. And then I want to make sure that my buttonholes are right in the middle of my button band. So I've gone ahead and marked that center area. So it's equidistant between each edge of the button band and just made a line for the button. Then this line right here that goes perpendicular to the center is where I want to start the button. So I just have a couple of markings on my example scrap of fabric, and you'll want to do the same thing for your garment. To get started, we're going to slide our fabric under our presser foot, and we want to line up this center line for the center of the button band with the center of our presser foot. And then we want to try to get this crosswise line right where our needle is going to go down. So our needle is going to go down right into that line. And this can take a little bit of adjusting. You just want to move it under there. You can also check that the edge of your button band is parallel to the edge of the button foot, buttonhole foot. And then you can also just move your needle down and check that it's in the right place and everything is aligned. So then you just want to grab your thread and your bottom, ah, you want to grab your thread and bobbin thread and just hold them to the side, just hold it down with one finger and then start stitching. We can just cut our threads and we have a pretty good looking buttonhole. Now sometimes, especially with this machine, I find that the buttonhole foot can get kind of caught up and it might feel like it gets stuck in one place. And in that case, I'll just use one finger to gently pull or push the fabric. Um, not an ideal situation, you want to be really careful, but you can do that if you feel like it's gotten stuck. 
Also, if the buttonhole foot has gotten stuck and you get a big knot of threads and it doesn't look great, you can use your seam ripper to take out the buttonhole. You just wanna be really careful. Um, I recommend mostly working from the wrong side and you can just slide your seam ripper underneath all those stitches lift out that thread and then pull the thread from the top. So that's in, a, in an emergency kind of situation. After you get your buttonholes all sewn, you'll also want to sew your buttons on. You can do this by hand or you can do it by machine. And I'm going to show you how to do it by machine. So this machine comes with a buttonhole foot and you just put it on like you do any other foot. My other machine has two little pieces that snap on, so refer to your manual. And then to mark the buttonhole placement, you'll want to line up your two pieces of fabric overlapping the button bands. And then I just take a pin and I stick it right in the middle of my buttonhole. I lift off the buttonhole and then I mark on the fabric where the button should go. Now I'm going to take my button and I put a piece of cello tape over the top of the button and I just put it on top of my marking. And you want to be a little bit careful about your holes in the button. Um, you want to make sure that they're going the way you want them to. So now you want to decide how you want to stitch your button. You could stitch two horizontal lines, two vertical lines, or you can stitch it with an X. It's really up to you. I'm going to do two horizontal lines. So I'll just slide my button under here and lower my presser foot. And I have my machine set to a zigzag stitch with a zero length. You can also just turn off the feed dogs on your machine. And I'm going to hold my thread and then slowly with the hand wheel, lower the needle. And this is to make sure that I have the right stitch width. If it's too wide or too narrow, you might break your needle on your button. Okay, so I feel good about this width and I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch. Okay, I'm just stitched a bunch of times. Then I lift my needle and I'm just gonna move the button down and stitch the remaining two holes. And again, I'm gonna make sure I have my placement. Okay. And then for extra security, you can bring these threads to the back side, either with a hand needle or you might be able to pull them through. And you can just tie them in a knot with the bobbin threads and that will provide extra security for the button. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that quick little video. There's one tool that I really like when it comes to buttonholes and it's the Slim Flex Expanding Gauge. And it's this little metal tool that you can shrink or expand and it'll help you make even markings for your buttons and buttonholes. I used to just use a ruler to do that and that's totally fine. It definitely works, but I found that this is just a lot quicker for marking the buttonhole spacing. If you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button down below. And if you want to support the channel, I have links in the show notes to buy me a coffee or visit the pattern shop. Happy sewing!